It was August 27th, 1963. Groups of people gathered at Howard University to prepare to make one of the most memorable marches in history, the March in Washington. I wonder if any of them knew they were about to be part of history. I didn't, as my best friend and I gathered on the yard at Howard University that cool March morning. A group of 15 of us passed our signs and practiced chants. Our orchestrators were two fellow Howard females fitted in black leather jackets and black berets with blow horns. Who are we? They cried. Trayvon Martin, we responded. What do we want? Justice. The large mass of us slowly moved across campus, shouting and chanting. Our feet pounded the pavement, giving rhythm to our chants. As we left campus, reporters filmed us as we walked. Onlookers cheered, chanted, and clapped. I remember a white couple getting off their bikes and following us. Where are you going, they asked. To freedom, I replied. Freedom Plaza. What astounded me the most was the diverse amount of people that followed us. We started off as a group of 15 students that snowballed into a mass of people marching for justice. My arms burned from holding my sign and my throat was sore from chanting, but I kept going. I had never really dwelled on politics, but the Trayvon Martin case really hit home. When I saw Trayvon Martin, I saw my little brother. I thought of him wearing his favorite navy blue hoodie and walking to the corner store as he frequently did in our predominantly white gated community. I thought how easily George Zimmerman could have lived in our neighborhood. How easily it could have been my mother crying on TV with a picture of my brother on her shirt. I had never been a part of a march or protest before and the feeling of being a part of one was empowering. I yelled louder and shook my sign with more force. Just like hundreds of thousands of protesters who participated in the March in Washington for justice and equality. I was there for justice. Justice for Trayvon Martin. I knew that Trayvon's death was prominent in the black community, but I had no clue that people of other races cared so much. In a society where the killing and prosecution of innocent black men is normally swept under the rug, it astonished me to see such a diverse amount of protesters. I give you Mr. Bert Lancaster. All Americans traveling no matter where in the world today are in the position of ambassadors and are very often made bitterly aware of our country's reputation. It is not easy to be an American abroad, nor is it easy to make coherent to those who are not Americans the nature and the meaning of our struggle. And we are therefore forever indebted to those Americans represented by the March on Washington movement for giving us so stunning an example of what America aspires to become.